You want to know all about the electrical system on this bus. It's, it's a lot. Um, I decided to use the biggest whiteboard that I had on the side of my bus, and I'm going to try and lay this out for you. This here, the EG4 12000 XP, is an, what's called an all-in-one AIO. Um, it is an all-in-one charger, inverter, pass-through unit. So it does all the things, right? So it can accept solar input, generator input, shore power, and connect to a battery, all and output to a breaker box. And then from there into the bus. So let's talk about this and break it down a little bit more. The exact specs you can find online, but I plan on putting about 4,000 watts of solar on the roof of this bus. Um, if this can handle a lot more than that. I want to say it can handle around 20,000 watts of solar input, but um, that would never fit on the roof of this bus. So that doesn't really matter. Um, but so we're going to have solar input, generator input, which is supplied by my Kubota 8 kilowatt, 240 volt, 30 amp diesel generator. It can also hook up to shore power, so your typical RV pedestal, which is 50 amp, uh, which is 12,000 watts. So a normal <clears throat> 30 amp RV pedestal is only going to give you 30 amps of 120 volt. RV pedestals give you two legs of 50 amp 120 volt, but they're out of phase by 180 degrees, which basically makes it 240 volts for, um, for usable practical purposes. That's how, that's how 240 volt appliances work in your home, is you have two different legs of 120, uh, 120 volt electricity, um, but it's perfectly out of phase. So that, that's how that works. And so um, this all-in-one unit can pick and choose where to draw power from. So when the solar is on here, and, uh, and if I, it's all programmable, but so if I wanted to, I could say, you know, use all of the solar power that we have available and supplement what we need with the generator. Let's say we're not, we're dry camping, right? So although the generator could put out 8,000 watts, say we have, say we have a 8,000 watt load, which, which is a lot, but just for, for principle here. So say we had an 8,000 watt load and we're getting 4,000 watts from the sun, then that would mean that it would only ask for 4,000 watts from the generator, which would obviously reduce fuel consumption and um, just put less, less stress on the generator. Um, but then as, uh, say, a cloud comes over, then all of a sudden we're only getting 2,000 watts out of our sun, out of the solar, then this will automatically draw more from the generator to compensate for that loss of power. So this would be drawing 6,000 watts from the generator, 2,000 watts from solar to give us our 8,000 that we needed for our pretend load here. <clears throat> In addition to that, obviously it has a battery. So we have a 48 volt, 14.6 kilowatt hour residential storage battery uh, behind this bay. I'll show you that in a second. So that is a huge, huge battery um, and that supplies the inverter as needed and when there's extra solar or from the generator or shore power I can also charge the battery if that's what I need to do. Um, and it's all, it's all programmable. It's surprisingly easy. There's just some rules about what you use and when, um, but it's, it's really um, it's really a, a great system and it, it works really well. So <clears throat> something I want to point out is that I'm measuring this battery capacity in kilowatt hours. Most YouTubers, especially in the RV community, seem to measure their solar battery capacity in amp hours. And that is a really, not a good way to measure battery capacity in amp hours because amp hours is kind of like saying I drive miles per hour. If you don't put the, the qualifier in there that I'm driving 20 miles an hour, then saying I'm driving miles an hour means nothing. If you say that you have 200 amp hours of battery capacity without saying the voltage, 
that those amps are being supplied at, then it means nothing. I understand that most RVs use 12 volt batteries, but not everybody does. And so it, you might have a, th so this battery is technically like a 304 amp hour battery. In 12 volt world, that doesn't mean much. That's not that big of a capacity. But since this is a 48 volt battery, all of a sudden that kind of puts this into perspective is this being a, a, a really massive battery. So this battery, 14.6 kilowatt hours, that is, very, that is roughly speaking 50% of the total electricity that an average American household uses every day. The average American household uses somewhere around 30 kilowatt hours of power per day. And so this battery can hold about half of that. So for, for this you know, bus, tiny home situation, that is, that is a lot of power and it really, really works well. When we are hooked up to shore power, then basically it ignores the generator. You know, the generator um, you know, doesn't need to run because we have full power from, uh, from the pedestal. And then basically everything just passes through directly into our loads in the bus when we're plugged into RV to an RV pedestal. And so say like the night before we leave an RV campground, I can go into the menu in here and I can tell it to charge the battery. So then the power will go through here into the battery, fill this up. Then when we're driving down the road, power is coming out of the battery into here and into the breaker box or from here. And you know, it uses a combination of all of the different inputs to supply the bus with the power that we need. So that's, that's kind of an overview. Um, it's a little more complicated than that, but I just kind of wanted to show you, show you how everything fits together here. So the other big thing that was kind of tricky to solve, and I'm not super proud of the way that I did it, but it was cost effective and I don't use it very often. Um, is I wanted to find a way to charge the battery off of the bus engine. And it's very convoluted, not proud of it, but it works and I'll show you what I did. So the engine alternator, like you have an alternator in your car, but that usually puts out 12 volts. The alternator in this bus puts out 24 volts. So that 24 volt power goes into four 12 volt batteries, but they are in a two series, two parallel, 2S, 2P configuration in the back of the bus. So that means that two of the 12 volt batteries are in parallel, to, um, which is still 12 volts, and then those two systems that are paralleled are put into series, giving you 24 volts total to start the engine and to run various other 12 volt systems on the bus. But what I did is I snagged power off of one of these four batteries. Uh, the bus came with a, a 12 volt um, converter charger, which basically uh, its job is to balance the loads between the batteries if you draw load off of one battery. So basically, um, if you have a 24 volt system and you're doing what I'm doing, which is drawing 12 volts out of a 24 volt series battery configuration, that converter's job is to balance out uh, the remaining charge in those batteries. So um, I am taking 12 volts off of one of those four batteries, putting it into an old inverter that I have. And it is a pure sign inverter, which is crucial if you're gonna be doing stuff like this. But so um, it's, it's one that I already had, but it, was, it only uh, took 12 volts in, not 24. So that's why I had to draw off just one of the four batteries. And that's, that's what I don't like about this. It's not really the right way to do it. Um, but this is really just kind of a backup. And I, I hardly ever use it. But so <clears throat> we go from 24 volts to 12 volts to 120 volts to a charger. It's a 48 volt battery charger that I got off Amazon designed for charging electric golf carts. So 12 to, 20, to 120, back to 48 into the battery. So there's a ton of loss in all of that conversion. It's, it's not good. 
but it does work and the engine produces an incredible, or the alternator produces an incredible amount of power so I don't really care about all the losses that much. And I've only used this twice for about an hour each time just to give me a little bit of power uh, on the really, really long drive days that we had earlier this year. Uh, the solar is not hooked up yet uh, or even installed, That we'll be doing that soon. But once I have the solar up there, I don't think I'll probably ever use this this method again, I just, I don't think I'll need to. Uh, the 4,000 watts of solar, unless it's just horrendous weather, should give us more than enough power. I can run our generator while we're driving down the road, and I do do that sometimes. Um, I prefer not to, it's just extra fuel, extra noise, and uh, extra heat back in the engine bay, uh, which is where the generator is too. Um, so I don't love doing that, but on the really hot days where we have to run the, the AC, then uh, and that's what we do. So um, I hope that kind of gives you a little bit of an overview of how this all works. It's, um, it's a big system and it's got a lot, of, a lot of different parts to it, but that's what I did and it works really, really well. I could not be more happy with the EG4 12,000 XP. It's not sponsored, paid for all this with my own money, but um, very happy with that product. It's working out uh, really well. I'm, I'm very pleased with uh, it's all its settings to make all these different inputs work together the way that I want. Um, it also has a, um, an auto generator start feature so that when your battery gets down below whatever percentage that you choose, uh, it can actually automatically start and then stop the generator if your generator supports that. So that was a really neat. Um, that was a really neat thing, and I just really liked that it had separate inputs for the generator and the shore power, meaning that I didn't need a transfer switch. So on our previous fifth wheel, I needed to have another thing right here called a transfer switch that basically would tell the inverter where to get power from, either generator or shore power if it was available. But this has multiple inputs, and it figures it all out, which is phenomenal. We use just a regular residential breaker box. I think it's a, um, that's not right, maybe a, maybe a 30 circuit box, something like that. Um, and so this can obviously put out 12,000 watts. And so we just put in the appropriate main breaker at the top and then we have all of our breakers down below that. Um, it, uh, it's just like what you, you probably have in your house somewhere. Uh, then obviously the loads come out from there to their respective circuits in the bus. So, you know, hot water heater, lights, uh, for us a dishwasher, and uh, the air conditioner, and, um, you know, all, all your different loads that you could have. Uh, we actually, uh, we actually have an electric car, and so we put a big circuit in here, and we have, in the front of the bus, we have uh, an EV charging outlet, a uh, level two charging outlet up there, and, uh, so that, that's an extra load, but it's really nice to be able to charge our car at the campground from our bus whenever, whenever we get there. And um, it, it works out really well. So uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Uh, let me know uh, what else I can answer for you. I just wanted to give you kind of an overview here, but then if I missed something or left it out, let me know what your questions are and I'll uh, see what I can do for you.